you know, I was asking the Lord this afternoon because the Lord opened my eyes and I saw festive angels taking their position around what looked like the map of Nigeria. I said, Lord, this is not Christmas. This is not New Year. What is happening? And I saw what looked like a troop of them just rushing and taking their position around the map of the nation. Hear me? When the fig leaves begin to blossom, the summer is near. If there's any prayer, I will ask you to pray. Is that I may see in this season. Hear me. You are a victim of what you see or what you don't see. Are you following what I'm saying here? I'd like you to pray that prayer regardless of who your next seat neighbor is. Take that stand on your own. Based on the revelation of Christ you have on your inside. There are things happening in the realm of the spirit now that I may see. That I may see, Lord. Shakatata la bakata taraka prophetish. That I may see. That I may see, Jesus. That I may see. That you open my eyes of understanding this season. That I may see, Father. That I may see, Lord. Open my eyes. My Father and my God. Open my eyes. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see, Lord. Let me see, Lord. Let me see, Lord. Lord. And I will not be ignorant of the activities taking place, Lord, in your council. The sons of Issachar understood times and seasons, and their brethren were at their command. Lord, that I may see. Lente kaba shalim baka brafadi shateka. Lente ruku rekete ruku. That I may love be laboring like a fool. That I may love be laboring like a fool. The labor of fools, it wears them, it wears them. The labor of fools, it wears them, it wears them. Show me this. Father, we ask tonight that the revelation of your word will jump at us. That everyone under the sound of my voice will see, Lord. We give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name. Please be seated. Thank you. Please swing your leg. Go back. Thank you. Please be seated. All right. Um, I've laid a foundation on this conversation. Second Kings, please. Second Kings. Second Kings, chapter number four. That's where we laid the foundation. But I will not teach like I've laid any foundation before, so I'm just going to 
um, probably start almost all over again. Second Kings chapter number four. Please, I'd like us to listen attentively. Is that okay? If there's any Bible study you should listen to, please listen to this. Is it clear now? Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. That's a very serious one. And I'm praying for all of you, you will not die young. Amen. You didn't say that amen like one who is not for me. Are you following what I'm saying? You don't need anything significant to have a loud amen. Is that okay? You will not die young. Amen. So if I'm going to teach, I will have to take everything bit by bit. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets. If you look at the way the Old Testament was written, whenever um, something significant or someone significant is about to be mentioned, there is going to be the mentioning of the name of the individual and in most cases, the name of the father. Is that okay now? In the case of Elisha, we saw Elisha, the son of Shaphat. In the case of Elijah, we saw Elijah, the Tishbite. What was, what was important was where it was coming from. Every other generation before him didn't seem to matter. Are you following what I'm saying? In quotes now. Are you following what I'm saying? But in the case of this guy, both the name and the name of his predecessors were not important. A certain guy like that. So there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the... We see this word sons of the prophet also used in 2 Kings 2. But you see, the root word is not just sons of the prophet. The root word is the guild. What looks like association of prophets. Is that okay now? So it can be interpreted, interpreted as the association of what? Prophets. Please pay attention. That's one expression of it. Another expression of that word is association of disciples of prophets. Is that clear now? Association of who? Prophets. That is, people who are doing something similar. Prophets. Then another expression is association of those who are disciples of prophets. So we have a mixture. Is it simple now? Those who, for one or two reasons, believe that they have come to a point that Elijah was their colleague. And those who believe that they are to learn from him. And that's why it shouldn't sound strange when you heard them saying, are you aware that today God will take away your master from over your head? That was the company of those who came to learn. But in the place of familiarity, they had become a colleague. Is this simple enough? Do you understand that? They came to learn. That's how they got into that company. But over time, they must have prophesied once or twice also, seen one or two signs, and now he was not a master over them. So they referred to him as the master over Elisha. But what I found out in most cases is that even if a man will not understand, if the man is blessed with a woman that understands, his journey will be very fast and smooth. This woman retained an understanding that this guy that is dead is your servant. Regardless of what he claimed to be. He said, your servant. There cried a certain woman, let's look at it again, of the wives of the sons of the prophet unto Elijah, saying, thy servant, my husband, is dead. But look at the second part. And thou knowest. Let's go back there. Verse 1. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. 
And the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondmen. Elisha received the mantle in 2 Kings chapter number 2. This event was taking place in 2 Kings chapter number 4. So it was one of the quick things that he ran into. This guy is indebted. And he shouldn't be. This is a house of grace. Shouldn't be. But you know that this guy feared the Lord. And you want to ask, what's the correlation between the fear of God and debt? You know before, you don't know anybody who is indebted. But for these new loan apps, sometimes you get unbelievable names. Please be informed that so and so and so is a fraud. Is a, is a colossal thief. Whichever, you know they have big English. And it's, I pray for you in the name of Jesus. You will not own. You will not owe debt. You will not be indebted. There's nothing beautiful about it because the borrower is a slave to the lender. If you are owing people, they can decide to disgrace you at any time. Are you following what I'm saying here? Ha! Ah, they were going to come to a mission house. Somebody we didn't know if you knew God, Jehovah. And that fellow was about to come and drag out the blood from the loins of a prophet because he was owing and he died owing. I have many questions reading this place. This guy feared God. But how come God did not intervene? The woman was, you know, if your wife says that you are a born again Christian, you are. Yeah. Women don't know how to pretend. They relate with you based on what they see. Are you following what I'm saying? Here? The wife said, you know, that if it comes to fearing God, ah, he, he feared God. Though. He said, you know. He had that reputation. But he died. Number one, he died too soon. Number two, he died owing. Those two things are not good. He died. Are you following what I'm saying? He died too early because his children were still young. And he died hoeing. So if we study this guy's life, we'll find out something. That this guy is actually a contemporary um, or someone, let me use the word, someone who happens to be in the same generation with Elisha. Are you following what I'm saying now? This guy happened to be in the same generation with who? With Elisha. Uh, now, talking about the issue of who and what is in the same generation, age is not the factor of what generation you belong. No. No. It is the day your eyes open that you assemble to a generation. <laughs> yeah. Are you following what I'm saying here? Let me say this to you. If the generation you ought to rise with outside the work or... It's not about starting ministry. You can start ministry and yet not with your generation. It's not about starting early. You can start early and start wrongly. Are you following what I'm saying? You, you, do you understand what I'm saying? Is this simple enough? One instruction can take you ten generations behind. One mistake with an instruction. And that's why one of the ways you know people that will drag is that they have no voice of authority over them. And let me say this to you. It is not enough that you have voice of authority. That voice can go mute. And when that voice goes mute, it is not approval. The silence of a father is not endorsement. Ah. I think Shall I say this? Uh, okay, let me say this. It's supposed to be something private. 
I was sharing with Jacob today. Ah, I just look at one of my investments and I say, hey, I don't struggle, I don't struggle, I don't struggle. The way I'm about to start struggling with this. Ah, so I've been asking God, ah, what's happening? This is a covenant. I function in that covenant of ease. It's not a joke. It's there. Ah. Can I tell you where it is coming from? Huh? Most of you just chant covenants. To every covenant, there are two parts. God keeps a part when you keep a part. I found out that as long as I don't allow my spiritual father sweat, I don't sweat. <laughs> I'm not saying, you get what I'm saying now. As long as it is a, it is a revelation between me and God. That when I go around this strange man whose word over my life never falls to the ground, I must find something that the blessing of God upon my life can take care of. As long as God can look at him and say, he can look at God and say, this here is like a thousand sons. What I'm trying to tell you in essence is, before you boast, know where the source of your virality is flowing from. Huh? Don't get to a point where God will show you minus grace, leave your ability alone and see the result. Are you following what I'm saying? And that's just in the past. I'm still going to go into some other things. All right? So, how come? Because when I read the Bible, I like to investigate. I was asking questions. How come somebody who is broke, somebody who is indebted, somebody who is going through a lot, how come, even at the tail end, his eyes were still not open? Huh? How come he was still speaking with arrogance despite this predicament? Because he was so fine and everything looked well until the wife cried out. How come in the midst of the unfortunate situation, he could still refer to Elijah, Elisha and say, your master is about to be taken. How come he still didn't see? You know why? Because the devil goes after the most disadvantaged. You know what I mean of that statement is? Have you found out that people who have things going well to some extent still have better revelation than those who don't at all? Because there's a devil who has decided, I will finish you. And you know why it is like that? Because the devil can give you scriptural backup for your problems. You know, let me, let, me, let me bring you down to this. When we are dealing with the lies of the devil, what do you think we are dealing with? Do you know what the spirit of deception is? Do you know what deception is? Number one, you are deceived when you believe you can't be deceived. You're already deceived. Deception can come in a very powerful way that the deceived will feel so anointed in the midst of the deception. The deceived will have convictions in the midst of the deception. The deceived will have certain kind of results in the midst of the deception. The deceived will have scriptural backups in the midst of the deception. Never you think that once you have a scripture, it can't be the devil. It's a lie. The devil can speak back the word, but what he does is that he twists the essence. Are you following what I'm saying here? So, and for that to happen, I'm going to have to go in the temple I'm going to go with. So you'll have to listen again and again to get many of the things. So I'm just going to continue. All right? For that to happen like that, it means the devil will have first erected a pillar called the pillar of pride. Are you following what I'm saying? There cannot be continuity in deception and stealing except one. There is a pillar of pride. 
Pride is what allows the devil to come in and go out, do as he wish, and the one that the devil is destroying and robbing will still feel very correct. Pride. Pride is when you rate yourself above measure. When you see self, where you should see God, where you should see God or see grace. Are you following what I'm saying? Pride is to believe that everything revolves around you and without you nothing moves. So if the devil is going to first destroy a man, the first thing he will do is to inflate the man with certain thought process. It will start looking like encouragement, like telling the man how much he is loved, how much is important in the scheme of what God wants to do. It will start in that innocent manner, in that on as, on manner you can't suspect. It will start in simple manner that you feel encouraged, you feel this. Then you begin to step into what look like martyrdom, the willingness to suffer for the cross. It's a mask. Where the devil will not, even when you fall out, are you aware? That in generation, there are the Daniels and there are the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Whose rising depends on the rising of the Daniel. Such that even when you begin to fall out of association of grace, and what should have taken you five months, begin to take 20 years. One of the things the devil now, you see, people are going through that. This is what is happening in the spirit realm. But how come they are not aware? But because they have believed. The devil has found a way to school and convince them. That this is what God wants. And then you will see them fighting results, fighting those who are getting it right, and begin to say it's not about results, it's not about that. Meanwhile, this fellow is dying a kind of death. This fellow is not where he should be and may not get there again. In the place of repentance, what comes is encouragement. And the devil is saying, Go on, go on, go on. I don't know if you have ever wondered when you look at the fathers of faith, that their contemporaries that they started together falling aside out of offense, and many of them, ah, shall I say this? Many of them kept believing in their heart that it's not about this fellow until they got missing in the radar for life. Let me say this to you. When you are quick to leave relationships because you feel you are the power source of destiny that will power that relationship. God and life will prove to you that you are nothing. You know why? God resists the proud. Many of you are quick to walk out of people's lives, walk out of even the ones that are benefiting you, and you will school yourself and give yourself reasons. Why? This doesn't matter. No, no, this doesn't matter. You will learn in a hard way. People who are petty don't become anything mighty. Mm. They don't. Meaning that, listen to me, it is, your eyes should not just be open to recognize the fathers. Your eyes must be open to recognize even your own contemporary. Men that you belong to the same generation. Ah. And find their significance in the equation of the activity of God as touching the earth. Why is this important? Where every grace exists, the truth of the matter is that you will still find humanity there. The humanity is so unpleasant, it will test your growth level, it will test your tolerance, um, your tolerance level, it will test your revelation of what God is doing, any decision you have to make that have to put humility aside is a wrong decision. Well, let me say this to you. You can grow so big and over the years you have schooled yourself in why you must not. There are people who are doing many things but they have not met God. One of the ways you will find out if you have met God is the decisions you are capable of making. There are things that are common with those who know God. He breaks them. Are you following what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what brokenness is? I cannot successfully make a decision that does not have God in the equation and keep it perpetually. Never. That's brokenness. 
If you see a broken man, make wrong decision. It will not take time. You will beg and find a way to address it and change. But the moment you have a consistent trait of making decision that is about you, and you know that's what the society is peeling out now. Me too. Do, let me do me. Let me... One of the idols that will be worshipped in the last day is self. Men will be lovers of themselves. They will be boasters. Are you following what I'm saying here? So, I'm using that to illustrate the case of this guy. Things are this bad. What theology did he believe? Was it that it was the plan of God or the intentions of God? For things to remain this bad? Was it that it was what God desired? How come in his lifetime he never cried for help? How come it was when he died the wife cried? How come he never recognized the grace upon the servant of God while he was alive? Could it be the humanity of Elijah? Could it be the humanity of Elijah? Because as we saw in scripture, that man didn't look like someone very simple. But it does not change the fact that God has found him worthy to put that heavy dose on him. You can't question God. True or not true? Talk to me now. True or not true? You can't. Call him any name. Call him a very angry man. Call him a boastful man. Call him. God has put something here. And only those who see and recognize it will get it. Call Elijah any name. It didn't matter to the God who put that grace there. Are you following what I'm saying here? How that we, bred, we bear this treasure in eighteen vessels. To live as a blind man is to take longer time to achieve what can be done in a short while. When they say life is not easy for the blind, it's more than a statement. It's a very true situation. Um, if it will take you five seconds to walk from here and climb the altar. It is not because you can move your leg in that five seconds. No. Even a blind man too can move that leg. But one of the things that comes with blindness is lack of recognition of direction. It is not about the ability to run. They are running, they can run, but the issue is that they can go in the wrong direction, yet with speed. That's what comes with blindness. It's not lameness. They can run. They can speak. I saw a video People's eyes were tied. They are tied with handkerchiefs. And they were told to run a race, a blind race. And people were falling on each other and stumbling. The issue with blindness is not speed. The issue is direction. And with wrong direction and good speed comes delay still. Are you following what I'm saying? Wrong direction good speed there's still going to be what delay so i read this scripture and i have many questions <sighs> what's happening when you know that your situation is this critical and you know there's a man in that generation that carries what can solve it. Let me, let me ask you a very basic question. I understand that many of you honor your leaders. In fact, there's been conversations now in the body of Christ about honoring the fathers. Fantastic. But how many of you have discerned your own contemporaries? Are you aware that somebody can be your age mate physically, but in the scheme of what God is doing is your father. <laughs> huh? Hold on. Are you aware? No, you don't know. Have you seen mothers 
refer to their sons who are called and ordained and anointed as my father. Talk to me now. Does that mean those mothers are stupid? <laughs> are you aware that you can have people that you are contemporaries but by the virtue of their cooperation and their alignment with God, they have stepped two generations above you. And they announce they are part of those who have mantles to hand over. That you are here and you are this, they give birth to you in the same year. Nothing. This matter does not recognize date of birth. No. It is not a matter of when you were born. It's a matter of how well you have walked. You and someone can start from the same generation and in 10 years, it's crossed three generations over. Are you aware? No, you don't know. When God left a man, the most dangerous person to relate with is the one who used to know him before and will not change the level of perception. They get cut off. They get denied of the grace upon that guy, upon the person. I'm really trying to talk to you um, and help you because everything I'm teaching you today is going to become a life experience. This one, what I'm teaching you is not what you just have for it. You will experience it. Whether you will fail or pass, when the time comes, will be a function of how deep the devil has built the pillar of pride. When that moment comes in your life that you will see someone that you are older than, that God has chosen to put it on him, seeing you, maybe you can even preach better. And say, I refuse to recognize it. And join the generation of those that will try to criticize this individual and bring him down. When God is building, you can't demolish it. The builder of all things is God. Let me say this to you. Even if you don't find any reason why you should honor a person, the fact that God could lift that fellow above you, respect what God saw, it may take you time to see it. Pretend like you have seen it and honor it. I'm not saying we should begin to worship a result. Let me share this with you. Uh, between 1976, was it 1976 in this nation, there was a major revival, which is part of the revival that we are still enjoying till today. Our fathers, most of them were part of that river. Bishop David Oedepo and all of them, they were part of that revival. Then to the 80s there were four major people into the 90s that were on television are you following what I'm saying one decided to begin to criticize another person amongst those four one also among those four decided to begin to criticize another person those two who took the position of criticism remained small. The other two that they were criticizing began to increase. Take your posture right. Be wise. Are you following what I'm saying? You will, you, you will have reasons to be angry. You will have reasons to be offended. Knowledge of history alone should tell you offense is a trap. When you hear me say, nobody can get me to that point where I will not forgive you or come to no, you, I will not allow you. If the devil has done every other thing and he can't, he will use one of your fellows to get your heart offended, you stop there. With, you, know, you know the reason why you hear all these things and still fall to the trap? Because you have legal reasons to be. If you know, you are celebrating what people have become. If only you know what they could have become. That's the part we don't know. That's the part that is not captured in history. It is only captured in eternity. When you see the way men march to heaven to compare to the way they could have come. 
Why can't they get to this point? They've made a major decision some 20, 30 years ago. They have justification. They've, listen to me. You say because you have peace in your heart about a matter is a sign is God. You can have peace about offense. You can give you, I'm telling you, you can have peace. I say, I, I feel peace in my heart. Even God knows he's wrong. Jesus said, my peace I give to you, not as the world. The world too have photocopy of their own peace. And they can issue it in the midst of something wrong. I say, I just have peace. You know what I'm saying? You feel offended, you don't come to church, say, I have peace, not going there. My peace is intact. And the river that a generation you belong to will. See, you know what the river is? It is flowing. Carrying something. People are drinking their portion and moving to the next phase. People will now have to go and queue again till that river will flow again. My God. And in most cases, it will flow through somebody they ought to drink together in their time. You don't understand what I'm saying? Huh? Somebody would despise an impartation now that all of you are young and say, what are they doing there? The next time he's coming back to drink, I will not be the one here. I have gone to another level. Somebody among those who is seated here had risen and is here. Not in church physically, but at that level who is the custodian of that one. If you now, you didn't humble yourself at your own time. You now have to humble yourself before someone that you belong to the same generation who now in the spirit realm is your father. Okay. Huh? Okay. This thing I'm telling you calls for wisdom. Don't just be a Christian. You should see. I've, I've no, I mean, I've been preaching this gospel for many years. I found out you will say the same thing and cry till the people see it. One simple thing being said here till you see it. Let me tell you something. We all look, but only few see. Are you aware? I sat down. Solemn assembly with Daddy Gio. Pastor here, the way. I looked at him. Where is this wisdom coming from? Listen to me. You truly begin to see when you see beyond the anointing. And begin to see that what is responsible for this is a man too. Anointing solves problems. It is man tools that makes the next generation. That you know I am anointed. The anointing will only take care of the aspect of your life that you need it to take care of. But when you recognize that what this fellow is operating with, there's an embodiment of a grace trusted with him. That is when you can share. Huh? So I sat down in that and I said, where this thing is coming from is not normal. Let me say this to you. Sometimes you trivialize what people are doing. Till God open your eyes and show you who they are. Eh? What do you think happened to Miriam? Eh? Was she not the one that went to hide Moses that stood there? She knew him. She seen his nakedness. When Moses, she felt Moses was now proving this. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Gather the gang of people and say you are not the only one that God speaks to. Look up, can you give me that scripture? Look at the way God spoke. God said, Are you not afraid? God was speaking to them. God, look at them. God Himself, God Himself. God himself knows what it takes for a man to be doing what Moses is doing. God himself knows what it takes. He said, are you not afraid? Give me that scripture. Are you not afraid to speak against Moses? Do you know where this guy stands? 
Hold on a minute. They are all seeking God now. But is that God we say I will buy him? You mean this thing came out of your mouth and it came out? He said, Who among you is a prophet? Except that I speak with him in dreams. He said, There's none among you like Moses, oh, that I speak with face to face as a man speaks to his friend. Huh? Look at it now. At the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses, Numbers 12. At not he, had he not spoken also by us? We too, we are getting revelation for people in camp now. And the Lord had it. Huh? You know, this looked like a quiet talk. But God heard in heaven. Verse 3. Quickly. Now, the man Moses was very meek. Please, let me, let me quickly help you with this. You know, every new generation always see the fault of the old. Until you are entrusted with what they are entrusted with and you discover that even the fault you are seeing, you that you feel better, now I'm talking generally now, if you are given what they are trusted with, you will mess up, you will not exist again. The perfect story I have for this. Because I watch my life patterns. What God is preparing you for, there will be a pattern for it. <sighs> watch that pattern. If in that pattern you have been failing consistently, the chances are high you fail in life. Watch, your life goes in a circle. Every time God brings to a new face, it's the same thing, but in another dimension. If in each of those times, anger, offense, something, pride, led you out of those associations, that's the same way you will likely walk out of destiny with anger or pride. It's the same thing. So I'm going to give you a very good example. While I was serving, that's the perfect, you see this thing people are saying, people are saying, the fathers, these, somebody even went to comment on my work, I said, the fathers have left God. I say, hey, yeah, you don't know what you are talking about. I left it there so people can see and recognize what foolishness looks like. And sometimes when you don't talk, you recognize those who also love you but are foolish because they will go and like it. Yeah, so you have to let them so you can identify them well and see. So when I got to service and got to the family house, ha! <sighs> Go to the kitchen, first three days, you know, it's free food. We like the way they were talking to us. Some of us are already doing stuff before we came here. <laughs> so I stayed in my room. Those girls in the kitchen are very rude. I will take conflicts. So a time came, the mama of the house noticed that I don't come out. She called me. I said, Pastor, we don't see you at the kitchen. I said, I just feel that when we pay, then I will resume. She said, please give me your cooler. When I want to serve food, I will serve yours. When everyone has left, just come and pick your cooler. So I said, thank you, woman of God. So we left. When it was time for ESCO selection, they asked us, what are the issues you see with the badge A? I said, well, this, you know, uh, let them just adjust this. Well, I found out people complained. They are rude. They are this. They are that. But they were not seeing the strength. They were united. If you have issues against the fathers, they still have the likeness of heart to bear with sons for years till sons can now say, we have offended you, we are sorry. Will your own heart be large enough to maintain them and not kill them? You don't know what you are talking about. Many of you have issues against your parents at home. But your Bible will say, Omotoni Baba Omola. Enuelo Onowa. That is a child that said his father is not prospering. He's also on the matter. Huh? They don't see the strength. Listen to me. By the time our set was to leave, 
the house, one girl came and emptied the whole family house. I made up my mind. I will never live anywhere that I can't go back to. No matter what I face here, I will leave this place when I am done. All escorts left. There was no family house to even hand over. Are you following what I'm saying? One girl, one, came. One. Ah. One day in Esco's meeting, I heard words I've never heard in my life. And I prostrated. Sir, I'm sorry. And people heard. You mean Pastor Lazarus prostrated? And they were still insulting him there. I can beg you. Uh, but look at it and just continue living. This guy was meek. But they were not seeing the meekness. But according to God's rationale, is the meekest on the face of the earth. What problem can you have with a meek man? You can still have problem. <laughs> because you are even having problem with yourself. Let me say this to you. If fault is what you are looking for, men of, it, men of God have it all. Imperfection ah, is plenty. But out of the dead, something sweet. You know that redo? Ah, okay. Now Moses was very meek. Above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. Verse 4. And the Lord spake suddenly unto Moses and unto Aaron and unto Miriam. Come out, ye three, unto the tabernacle of the congregation. And the three came out. And the Lord came down in the pillar of cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam. And they both came forth. And he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet amongst you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. My servant, Moses, is not so. Ah. Huh? Who is faithful in all my house? Continue. With him will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not in dark speeches. And the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Wherefore then were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? Why was God saying this? In simple terms, what was God asking? Can't you see? Pastor Iya Deboye, it's not, it doesn't sound deep. It's not really, it's not, no, no, the, the polite scriptures, this, this. Can't you see? All this bishop boy, they is just talking about prosperity up and down. This, 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 this. Can't you see? Are you blind? God has left CAC. All those things in old school. I am about all those things. Ha. Can't you see? 
that no river flows except it flows from another river. That some men talk something with God and it's been flowing from one generation to another. It may change expression, but it's the same source. Do you know the price of revival? Are you aware that with all the complaints of young people, what we have now in Nigeria is revival? Because even in the midst of revival, check scriptures, people are still asking for revival. May you not be asleep in the days of your visitation. Huh? That's what happens. There's been the messianic prophecy. It will come. But even at that, they were still expecting that it will come from a royal family. Do you know the price it takes to have what we have in Nigeria? The headquarter of the move of God on earth. The level of forbearance have you been hot before? Do you know it hot differently when you have just championed the move? You don't know. The adversity, the criticism, the, the, the daggers from your own brethren that can come with championing a dimension in God when they don't understand that God would have sent you How many have they survived? How many have you? How many can you? Huh? I don't know how long you've been alive. You've survived a few things. Ministry is the most difficult job on earth. I can tell you. But at the same time, God supplies grace. One of the things that makes it difficult is that you are dealing with men. Huh? But do you know what it takes for God to forge a man like Papa Hege? That if people will rise and they will have to get into accuracy of the things they are reading in the Bible but they don't understand. You want to build that foundation of righteousness, new man in Christ, faith, the Holy Spirit, prayer. What it took God to compel a man in study and prayer. And say it's not about just study. You have to pray and fast so that the flesh don't seep into this. And a generation will rise and say what we know now, even we again didn't know. Huh? Ask your neighbor, can't you see? Huh? I have examples of <clears throat> call Pastor W. F. Kumi. Call him any name. Like you want to. Do you know what it takes for God to raise a man in holiness and even in the days of his youth will not defile himself? These men have been gathering thousands since the days of their youth. Go and read the revival of how deeper life started. 40,000! The only time we are having that happen again is in this generation. And at over 80, God is now using that man to say, adjust this. And the response is, yes, Lord. Can't you see? Some of those who are even talking may not survive the years.
men who through faith subdued kingdoms, shut the mouth of lions. When you look at a man like Pastor Chris or Akilome, what do you see? A man that at some point in his ministry, at least 90 to 95 percent of prominent minister stood against that man, survived it, and yet no element of bitterness. Can't you see? And he's still walking in love and standing. Ah! When you look at the fathers, what do you see? What, what is the source of your pride? Are you aware that all the kings that survived in scripture survived because they had a prophet? Huh? You know the reason why small money is shocking young people? Because they don't understand that there's something called the weight of tomorrow. And men navigate it by the anointing. By that grace. The hand of God. Ah. When you begin to have small things and feel that's your competitive edge, ah, uh, you've not started. Ah, huh? let me say this thing to you: you may have more crowd than your father. So crowd is not the yardstick of what determines who can father you. That based on where I am in ministry now, I need a man who has this wealth of experience in terms of crowd. This is not experience in terms of crowd. We are talking about experience in terms of handling principalities and powers. Huh? You may have more money than your father. But there's a place he stands. It's called the place of authority. Listen to me. Listen to me. Let me, let me take you back to the old days. If, if we are not careful... Intimidation is trying to water down the weight of the truth. Listen to me. Listen to me. It is not enough to honor your father. They must perceive it. So your days can be long. Honor is not on your own terms. It's on their terms. Listen to me. Don't be a child that those God has set above you remembers and they are grieved. You want to show them through action and stylishly. Ah. Huh? That's why I told you while I was talking. The silence of a father is not a blessing. When your father begins to tell you, I struggle to correct you, maybe no. Ha! Ah. Ha! Ah. Ha! Ah. From whence have I fallen? Let's leave it. Okay. You know, there's a need for someone to tell you this. So that you will be without excuse. Huh? What I'm saying, is it simple enough? Talk to me. What I'm saying, is it simple enough? Okay. I was in a meeting on OAU campus. That the Jew was invited to come and preach. I sat down there inside the crowd. When the meeting was over, I was going to carry my things and go. And God said, when the time comes and I call my servant, Iadebo home, 
Will I still have a friend like him amongst you? I sat down. I was in that same spot throughout that day. Crying. Can I say this to you? Everyone who later rose in their generation to minister to thousands and millions were once in the crowd. There's no anointing that will separate you and make you too big to sit down under ministration. Huh? And say, this kind of, ah, cows, ah, I, 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 ah, I can't cope under meetings. No. It is the anointing that makes men. It is in the place of sitting under that God finds people who are seated. He won't use no veins, regardless of who prophesied over you. He will not bring a no veins up. If you are too big to submit, nobody will submit under you in your generation. Huh? I feel this kind. Ah, I cannot go to ah, church. Ah, no. All those meetings, no. Can I tell you, the anointed also goes for meetings. In fact, one of the things you must discern are meetings where the grace to make men of your generation is flowing from. Ah. Huh? Let's go back to that second Kings. So I began to wonder with all that Elijah represented. Somebody didn't see it. Can I tell you that what is happening now is that you are hearing When somebody sees. You know, it happens spontaneously. God just opens somebody's eyes in a message. Ah! Is this what we have been under? The Lord was here. And I didn't know. Huh? Your servant feared God. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So that you fear God doesn't mean your wisdom is complete. Just the beginning. He feared God. But he didn't revere men. He didn't understand the system of men. Even Jesus grew in favor with God and with men. Love God like you can. Despise men. Men will delay you. <laughs> do, do you did you see what happened in Genesis 27? Huh? Isaac. God had spoken before those kids were born. That the elder will serve the younger. But Isaac said, I have it. He said, go and make me a venison. That I may bless you. My soul may eat, be satisfied, and I may bless you. Huh? What did Jacob say when he wanted to bless his children? He said, gather ye yourselves, ye sons of Jacob, that I may tell you what will befall you. Ah! What will what? Ah! Those who have it, have it. Hmm? The greatest days of my life are the days the blessing is provoked. Many people don't know how to provoke strange order. Of favor. That these things have been bastardized in church doesn't mean they are not real. But let me advise you. Never allow your father guess where you stand in terms of honor for him. You see, let me say this to you. Look up. I know you saw that when the issue happened in the body of Christ, I wrote a post out. You know why? 
your generation should not guess where you stand. Say it out loud. This is where I silence is consent. And say, I'm just quiet because I've been doing. They don't know. Say it. I'm not part of generation that abuse their fathers. Are you following what I'm saying? Ah. Ah. Oluwa fun me ni ogbon ti o ju ogbon aye lo I'm not giving you prayer points it just came to my spirit Give me the wisdom that is above the wisdom of the world Ah I don't know what the name of this guy is. People will call him Patrick. Prophet Patrick. You didn't have to die early. You were under a cover. Were you making decisions without carrying him along? Or did you despise the covering? What happened? I'm not you saw when Pastor Chris Kilome said till date. <laughs> when he wants to pick call from mommy Daosa, he kneels down. It is this generation that says scripture says, call no one father. There's no father but God who is in heaven. Listen, listen. Do you know that amongst all of you seated and hearing me now, there will be one or two whose heart is sealed beyond repair. That all these things they are saying in church. It is so bad, it doesn't concern them. As I'm talking, demons are finding scriptures to show that you see what is the problem of the body of Christ. And they will still write a post after this conversation. I'm telling you as a prophet, there are two here. <laughs> Wait, all these things they are saying that's the problem of the body of Christ Ah, Jesus told Peter he said the devil has chosen to sift you but I prayed for you when you are strengthened strengthen your fellow ah, when it was time of Judas he dipped the bread in soup gave him and said that's what you want to do do it quickly ah, position him Positioning. Peter misbehaved, took them to go and fish. Jesus came back again, restored him. Positioning. Ah. Ah. I know that it is demons responsible for the misbehavior of many. And that demon wants, that was the demon that failed their fathers. That demon is ready to destroy them. But he wants to do it scripturally. Since they also honor scriptures, let's give you scriptural way. You don't have to fall like your fathers. I have watched people I know I can't help again. Except to pray. Don't get there. Talking to you from my heart. I have watched sons become what they look like. They were labored over. And I began to ask, at what point did you begin to drink of strange waters? At what point? You can't walk in isolation in this generation and finish well. You can't. You can't despise leadership. Can't treat your leaders with scorn. Your result must not enter your head because you have not even seen anything yet. The journey is far, and there are a bunch of demons released to see that this generation doesn't rise. No generation has kept the revival for too long. If the fathers have kept theirs, may I tell you that the battle has just begun. 
What did Adeboye do to get to this point? That can say, we are about to leave, but grab us. Because he knows he still has it. Johnny is farther than all these conclusions you are making. It's far. Johnny is far. I'm telling you from my heart. I look at even at this point, there are casualties already. Shouldn't be. Some of them will be restored, but ah, Nigba me I show bomo yemo. This thing called pride, it can come in a spiritual way. You can never have a godly reason not to be humble. It takes humility to forgive. It takes humility to restore relationships. It takes humility to put the kingdom first. You know, sometimes there are relationships that they are almost not worth keeping. But for the kingdom, we will stand hand in hand and defend one another for this kingdom. Huh? There are many questions to ask this man. His life didn't look like one who was under. But the Elisha, they are now calling the master now. How did he get there? He followed. Listen to me. You don't follow the anointing and get double portion. You follow the personality. Ah. You, you, you listen to me. You are letting, you are, you are showing that it is for the sake of what you carry that I respect you. It's not like where I respect you. You can't get it. Bishop Abioye is not sitting around the anointing of Bishop Abioye. He's sitting around the personality. That's where the fire burns the most. That's why men look at those who have coped with them all this long with the weakness I know I have and say, I give you from my heart. Every honor that comes to me comes to you. You love the anointing but hate the personality. Uh, that's not the method. It's the personality. It's the personality. He didn't say I want double portion of your anointing. Double portion of your spirit. Your spirit. Huh? Give us that scripture. Be, be up to date. Double portion of your spirit. Something is going to happen. And while they were moving, after he had told him to go back several times, he looked at me. What do you want to be done for you before I go? Say, let double portion of your spirit come. And scripture says, while they were here talking, huh? as, please give me that scripture, while they were still walking, I'm going, a, 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 a chariot came. Where is it? And it came to pass while they went on and talked. Behold, there appeared a chariot of fire. The kind of chariot that didn't wait and say, climb. As it appeared, it was on top. He didn't wait for discernment. You must be moving with it. He didn't wait for him to recognize now. You must have recognized before. Parted both. Then both asunder. And Elijah went up by a wild wind into heaven. Verse 12. And Elisha saw it. May you see it. Yeah. And he cried. Not they called Elijah his master. But no, that's not the quote. My father, my father, the chariot. Listen to me. What did he see? Elijah was the chariot of Israel. He's not talking about those chariots as the chariot of Israel. His spiritual office was the chariot of Israel. He saw him, he saw his position in his life, then he saw his office. The chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and rent them into two pieces. Verse 13 now. 
And it took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him. And he went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. What happened there? And he took the mantle. The same thing Elijah did. He's not trying, he didn't despise it while Elijah was doing it. No. He saw it. He took the mantle and smote the waters. The first thing that we need to separate will only understand the code Elijah. And he said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? Meaning that after he struck it, he see the open door. I have come under an umbrella and the extension of a grace. The man is gone, but the grace didn't leave the earth. I'm the extension of that office. Where is the Lord God of Elijah? The waters heard it and parted either and tida. What do you see? What do you see? Do you, do you, we are not talking about idolatry of men, but do you understand the significance, the weight, and the offices that men occupy? What do you see? We are in a very active season of transition in the body of Christ. Where a lot of things are happening. Grace is flying everywhere. Hey, hey, just leave them. Something is happening. When you see, what do you see in this season? Where are you seated? Are you standing where you can see? Are you seated where you can see? Are you positioned where you can see? I will stand upon my watch so I can see what I will say when I'm reproved of him. And I will know how I will answer. What do you see? What do you see? And if we have a generation of men that I will cry out, that I may see you and recognize the spiritual nature of what is happening now, all oh, that I may see. Something is happening and the Lord is opening eyes calling things to the attention of men and the Lord has been here with his grace and his power. Oh that men sees. Oh that we will see Lord. Shalakate rukupatai and ziga bala te kivredi shada kabata awada shali ingrata baleta brembe kuti shalagan balataka emi mima esheo emi hawa muli and you cook cool and bow. Emmy, me, my shell. Emmy, me, my shell. Emmy, how will you? And you cook cool and bow. Emmy, me, my shell. Shakata la rakate te Nana shaliga batate Embre fedi shalakata Shalakata bakata karate Aida kambala deli shikambata Vende kelaba kuti shalabakata Lenta kaba Yahinda kabalata Emi mi mo e se o Emi ha o di 
Please stand on your feet, everybody, where you are seated. For we are surrounded with so a great cloud of witnesses. And as the Lord was opening my eyes, all I was seeing was just multitude of people in white staring at a generation again and saying, will you see it? Listen to me. Hear me. Hear me. There are meetings where God allows certain waters to flow through. Because there are functionaries in their generation that will be a part of it. Listen. The proof that you have seen is that you are made a partaker. Are you following what I'm saying? When Elisha saw him, it rested. Something is going to rest tonight. I say it again for those who recognize. Something is going to rest tonight. Now, I don't know who this is for. I know if a church is also connected, but I see what looks like a bread, but is on fire, descending with so much speed. I'm not expecting a bread to look like a meteorite or something. I see what looks like a bread. And I remember immediately the case of Allah when he said God told him to eat half of what the whole world eats. I see that. I don't know who that is for, but as I speak right now, by the imprint of the Holy Ghost upon this meeting, as I speak, it finds expression upon those that it is for. Now! Now hear me. Hear me. Every minister, every Christian is just, may just be an anointed Christian until they see something and a mantle clothes them over. Is that okay now? It is when that mantle wears you on that you are given the torch of recognition and uniqueness for the generation you have been sent to. If not, you are still in the crowd of the general people who are anointed and all that. But today, there is recognition 
Men under this sound begin to recognize their place. Give me a sound. Give me a sound. Give me a sound. There's a recognition of spiritual place. Kala katush. Awa. Talakate. Baluas. 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 Yagatuga. Salabaka. Hey. Kaus. Waka bahua katai. Walaka bota kabalai. Yeah, 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 kata. Aidugu subaba la kate. Bamba la kate. Bamba la kate. Hear me. Some of you are singers, you are worshippers. You are still in the general level. There are people, some are alive, some have gone to be with the Lord. Whose mantle for another order of functioning is hanging, waiting for a generation that sees it. Hear me? You are not called in isolation. You are called after an order. And I ask in this meeting, stretch out your hands. The order you belong to in the spirit realm, as I speak right now, the windows are open and the mantle for the expression right now. Shakatala Bakati, Rombekan de la Katish, Ailos, Akan de I, Eikus, Baan de Gilish Suku, Badakaha, Awubon de Kai. Bombikibudus. Men are becoming another person here tonight. Salakapalakati. Revenekadi. Salabakata. Rababande Ketiti. Sedidi Gibalai. Sikiti. Sikiti. Father, I ask. In this meeting, that the eyes of understanding be enlightened. Rash, please stand where you are. Something is happening. Stand where you are. Something is happening. La kate le rakabi sata bakata. Aikutush bawan de kapila. Fin de kaba la tiga balakatish. Revish. Now hear me. Hear me. God spoke to me. And he said, son, I have placed my spirit of wisdom upon you. A time is coming that your generation will seek for wisdom. Then will I bring you out to them. And I know that's a grace, not a general calling. No, 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 no. That's an exclusive preserve. God is bringing you into separate manifestation. Separate grace for your calling. The mantle for it. For men called in this pattern that you have been called to. From this minute finds expression upon your life. Shakata Daraka. Can I hear somebody cry in the next 30, 45 seconds that I may see? Ah, that I may see. And I will not see men as trees. That I may see. Shakata la bakata. Shalakate shilika bata and the kebulu suka bata leka bahadish like bata. Amen. Hear me. Hear me. Let me share this with you. Something happened to us. My friend. When I say my friend, I don't give that word or that name to many people. My friend came to meet myself and my wife in the house. I'm, please, please get my heart. I'm not saying this 
for anybody to come and do something, I will not risk this conscience for anything. Are you following what I'm saying? I'm trying to show you about when God opened people's eyes. My friend, who we have been together before I will ever know my wife exists, came to the house and knelt down and brought out 100 US dollars and said, I found out that there is a grace upon the both of you. How come I'll be trusting God for a wife? Nobody is showing up. Nobody, all this, all that. My friend, he said, I'm not going to stand up. Both of you should lay hands on me. Hear me? We lay hands on him like a joke, like a dream. Like it, we can't even explain what happened. Doors! The, um, now, the door just opened, bam. Settled. Settled in an unbelievable way. And we're talking. He said, You've forgotten. He said, You've forgotten what I did. And what you guys did that night. I said, My Lord, could it be that somebody's key is even with the hand? But they will never see it. I've told you the key that honor will not open, the door that honor will not open at all. I'm telling you. That's why I tell you that the covenant of ease upon my life, one of the guiding principles upon it is that as long as I'm here, my spiritual father must never sweat asking God for what God has given me. It's a covenant between me and God. Make me his comfort. It's not, Chinese, it's not a, do you get what I'm saying? I'm always looking for ways to, uh, now please get my heart. I, by the grace of God, God, I believe that God has done something for me. Are you following what I'm saying? Now I'm not saying this, somebody come to meet me and do anything emotionally, I can, I can embarrass you. And I say that, please don't get that word. I'm a man of the spirit. Are you following what I'm saying here? But I'm talking about deep-seated revelation. Not the one somebody honors today. Tomorrow you'll feel offended and say, what is all this nonsense here? Who does he think he is? Are you seeing the generation we have? Unknown lives, but not deep in the heart. I'm telling you, when you recognize where things are flowing from, your posture will change. It's a key. And I'm giving you, myself, during the lockdown, myself and Lawrence, we're moving down house of fathers and knocking. In all of those places we went to, each time we went out, apart from we saying ministry too should do, we emptied our account. And this man will look at you. Baba Loki prayed for us. Called his son. He said, I don't know those guys. He said, but something left me. So I felt something while I was praying for them. The last time it happened was when Archbishop Idaosa met me and prayed for him. Ah! Ah! Somebody have opportunity to meet a father and mother of God. Say, well done, sir. Are you seeing where pride is killing you? Men that can. I left that place of meeting with Baba. I prayed for somebody who has been in UCH condemned to wheelchair, nothing, and he's not paralyzed. That same midnight, the fellow got up and began to walk. I, I am not a stupid person to say I'm so anointed. Something came. I said something came. It is not enough you get. You must always recognize where God brought it from. Are you following what I'm saying here? I want to beg you in the name of God. Begging you in the name of God. Most of you know when you come around me, I barely give people time. And that's because I say enough when I'm teaching and my life also says a lot. That just ask simple questions. And I don't know whether it's my own concentration. That's one of my own humanity. I'm trying to work on it. My wife knows this man is a solitary man. I spend time with my wife. But is, there's something about what is on me for it. There's just that thing that needs to be alone with God. I just can't tell. I look at people and I say, How come? If you follow the things we are teaching you, you will get a word in season. Even if it's not coming directly, you will hear a rema. Because there's so much weight behind these things. Are you aware? I 
beg you. Don't drink strange waters. Don't allow yourself to get lost. At some point in time, pride, pride to colonize people, call yourself back and say, not me, Lord. Not me. I want to pray for all of you in the name that is above all names. What we saw as the issue where this guy died early but also died poor will never be your issue. A minister of God came to me about two weeks ago. Said they needed money to pay for rent and all those. I said, me too, I need money. I said, if there's any other thing I can do, me too, at this point, I need money. And he said, I've recognized a grace upon your life. That's the grace of his Pray for me. I said, that one is more than enough. Blessed him. Went back three days later, sent me a message. One person called him and said, die rent. Please don't bother yourself. We'll take care of it. There is grace. If only you see it. Are you following what I'm saying here? I pray for all of you. Those who are having deadlines to meet financial constraint, all those things. From today, hear this prayer well. The Holy Ghost begins to open your eyes to activate principles that brings you into unel- unending wealth. Every wealth that is unending is a product of impartation that was championed by a principle. And men of the spirit understand this. You come into a level of ease. For as many of you who have seen it and recognize it, a level of ease you have not seen in your life before. For those who are not careful about the amen, enter now. The kind of result your parents didn't see at a young age begin to see those results. Begin to receive powerful revelations of the Spirit that brings you into a operation of wisdom. You begin to know what to do by the help of the Holy Ghost. None of you will die before your time. There is a grace upon this house, the covenant of life. I pray and it doesn't matter how much the thought of death has been fighting your mind. None of you will die before your time. You will not be indebted. You will not be indebted. In your generation, you will not be a latecomer. In your generation, you will not be a latecomer. In the name of Jesus. When they are looking for men of your generation in the place of fulfillment, you will not be missing. In the name of Jesus. Hear me. In the name that is above all names, you will not vanish like smoke. Wrong spirits seducing spirits that colonizes men and lure them away from their God-given destiny will not colonize you. In the name of Jesus. You begin to see new level of ease. Hear me? The kind of results that you have not seen in your life. There's a grace for it. Oh. Yeah, I've seen it. That there is grace for it. Begin to see those kind of results. The mercy of God will speak for you. If you are under the sound of my voice and you are already offended at people that the grace upon their life God is supposed to use to raise you and the devil has given you a reason why you must keep it so. That's your birthright about to be stolen. Go and beg. I'm not saying go and say, eh, I felt led. Go and beg and reconnect yourself. Are you following what I'm saying here? Go and beg and say, I was very stupid. I was foolish. I didn't know. I didn't know. 
I allowed the humanity crush me. Please hear me. I pray for all of you. In the name that is above all names, you will not be small. Your men will not be few. Excel. Live and not die. It is done. In Jesus mighty name we are prayed. Rise and give the Lord praise. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Give the Lord praise.